Okay. Time for new. Ready? Yes. First up. First up. This is half new, so revision. Um, so this is the Feather M0 uh, LoRa radio board, 900 megahertz. You may notice it looks a little bit different. It now comes with an FCC certified module on the front, and uh, it's in a tin, and it's got the FCC number. It's otherwise exactly the same. It's pin compatible, code compatible, basically size and shape compatible, um, except now it has that nice tinned module. Um, and yeah, and it's FCC certified, so we uploaded the certificates, and people like that. Right now, this is only for the 900 megahertz module, and here you go, so yeah, nice. Nice tin, protects it. You might get like slightly better um, radio range because of that. You get like much, much better, but um, it is a little more protected and you won't have stuff radiating out and uh, possibly uh, radiating into your chip, which you don't want. You want just stuff radiating out of here. That's it, just out of here. Okay. Next up, these are stickers specifically designed in partnership with Cartoon Network. If you like Steven Universe, if you like Adventure Time, if you like all the things in the world of the Cartoon Network and their brands and their shows, this is it. They're on the back of the boards. Um, they're a sticker pack. We're really excited about this. We did the partnership with Cartoon Network um, earlier in the year, and now um, after the art's approved and we did... Um, all of our testing, so they look great on the back of the boards. They're now available. We'll have a lot of Cartoon Network, specifically Steven Universe, because the movie's coming out. Um, but so, there's Powerpuff in there. There's Adventure yeah. Time. So you got all sorts of cool characters. Officially licensed. Logos. Stevens. Yeah. These are great stickers just to have no matter Unicorns. what, but they just happen to fit on the back of the boards. Mojos. Perfectly. Pandas. Yeah. So, you Gems. know, while there isn't, uh, you know, uh, multi multicolor PCBs that would make sense for electronics quite yet, this is the next best thing. You could put it on the back of a board yeah. and you can personalize it in addition to if you wanted to write your name on it, but you also have your own um, sticker and your own yeah. branding that you want to put on it with your favorite characters. These are nice vinyl stickers. So they're yeah, removable. They last long. And they just and pop right on there. Boop. Yep, they're a little bit smaller so that even if you don't get them centered perfectly. Yeah, we want, we want to make them smaller still. that way with the alligator clips and stuff that you don't scratch you don't up scratch the sticker. Yeah. yeah look good. Okay. Looking good. Thank you. So those are the stickers. And thank you to our Cartoon Network friends for helping us out with all this and more. Okay, next up. We've got this um, enclosure kit. This is actually a two in one. There's two products, so I'll kind of talk about them together. Um, people love our Neo Trellis board. Uh, it's a four by four grid of NeoPixels controlled with Seesaw. Um, you can tile multiple grids together to make your own little four by four grid control. We've done a bunch of uh, 3D printed cases for it, but we also now have a laser cut case. These are really nice and um, durable, beautiful cases. And so we have the case that comes as uh, like eight acrylic pieces or seven acrylic pieces. I don't know exactly how many. Um, and it fits any of our feathers, except for like the feather fauna. And um, then you can put the um, Neo Trellis board on top uh, that has all the Neo pixels and you can control it with an Arduino or a CircuitPython code. Uh, if you're using like a Feather M4, which is what I recommend, you can use either. If you're using a Feather 32U4, then you'll have to use only Arduino. And um, this one shows all the fixins. So the feather board goes here and you can still access the reset button and then um, the battery is connected through here if you'd like to have a battery. And then an on-off switch lets you turn it off um, with a switch, which kind of just juts out a little bit. It's kind of a nice, you know, like it's inset enough that you, you can get it with your finger, but it doesn't stick out a bunch. And um, inside you have to do a little bit of wiring. You do have to solder four wires from the feather to um, the Neo Trellis board. And then, yeah, you can pick any feather. And um, we also have a pack that includes the Feather M4, um, as well as the Neo Trellis board, the elastomers in the case. This version we built with the battery and switched just to verify that it all fit. But I'll say that it doesn't make as much sense for the Feather M4 because this isn't a wireless board. So if you're building with this, this with an ESP32 or Blue Fruit board, then having it be wireless, like battery powered, makes a little bit more sense. But 
as is, you know, if you're going to use it as a MIDI controller, you'd have to have it plugged in. So the pack we have is um, just the Feather M4 with all the parts minus the battery and the switch. But this is to show you that if you did have one of our, you know, 30 Feather boards that could possibly do wireless, um, it is possible to have it be battery powered. And, you know, if you don't want to have it send data, maybe you just want to have a simple LED button board, then, yeah, you can run it untethered as well. Okay. Next up, more Stemma. A Stemma QT board. More Stemma. A wild Stemma QT has appeared. This is the MSA301. We did a little stream about this a few weeks ago. This is an interesting chip. It's like a 20 cent accelerometer. Um, we put a bunch of other stuff on the board and of course assembled it and tested it. So it's more, more than 20 cents. But if you would like to experiment with this chip, which I think is a very interesting chip because again, it's so low cost. Um, this is a good breakout to use. It's an I2C only chip. You can't change the I2C address. Um, it does have an interrupt output. It has kind of everything the list 3 dh has. It has tap detection. It has uh, motion detection. It has orientation detection with interrupts and stuff. So you can do quite a bit with it, and it is smaller than the list 3 dh It's quite teeny. Um, so it, you know, if you need to have a very compact accelerometer as well, uh, but it's sold from a Chinese company. You have to kind of use a Chinese broker to get it. We don't have the ch chips for sale yet, but we do have this nice breakout with, of course, the chainable uh, quick connect on there. So you can uh, wire it up to a breadboard and then chain other boards onto the other end. Okay. And then tune in every week for our STEMA series. We've been doing STEMA Sundays, so you'll see some of these boards and more. Okay, next up, it's coming soon. Coming soon from Kathy, her bots book. Uh, she's done a bunch of amazing guides for us. She's an excellent educator, a yep. teacher, and writer, and diagrammer. Uh, and so this, um, I think this will be a really good robots book because it will be um, different than a lot of the robot books that are like, great, so you're going to spend $500 and you're going to get like a brushless DC motor controller. That's, that's not what this is. This is for uh, maker spaces and students and kids who want to get started on the cheap just to explore robotics. And I think, uh, I haven't seen the book, but I trust it will be So pretty I got an advanced copy. I got the PDF. Yeah. Oh, you did? Read it. Ooh, so we don't stock lots of books. So I asked for it first. We don't stock lots of books, but the ones we do are good. And this one in particular, in addition to it having our stuff in it, which is great, this would be a book we would stock anyways. Yes. So good work, Kathy. All right. All right. Next up. Coming soon, this is the Trust M chip from Infineon. It's a new crypto authentication chip. A couple weeks ago, we put in the ATECC 608 from Microchip. Uh, they're not the only company that's making these, you know, low cost uh, crypto authentication chips that have hardware crypto uh, acceleration as well as secure storage. Uh, this chip is kind of nice because in addition to all the standard crypto stuff, AES and um, uh, elliptical certificate checking and um, RSA and uh, HMAX, it can also um, store, it has a secure memory location that you can use. So you can store data in it as well, uh, which I think is kind of neat. Right. Um, it's got like 4K of memory and a random number generator and like two random number generators. And uh, it's coming soon, so sign up. And um, it just got released yesterday. We even posted the press release. Yeah, we got this. Special thanks to Oscar, who works there. And we were able to do a product very quickly. And we have a very short video that we did just to show its capabilities and us getting it up and running. So take it away, us. Okay, Lady Ada, what is this? Well, it's a STEMA Sunday, but it's also a security Sunday. We're getting the STEMA for the Optica Trust uh, Crypto Auth chip working. This is an Infineon chip, and they it released in Arduino library. So yeah. I wrote some code to yeah. use with our OLED library, and right now, um, it's just generating random numbers every, you know, 100 milliseconds or so, and I'm displaying them on the OLED. So that just shows that the chip is working and I'm communicating over I squared C. So it's a cute little crypto chip. Okay. Shout out to our friend, Oscar. Thanks, Oscar. Yeah. All right. Next up. Um, recently, we announced that we joined the RISC-5 Foundation. It also means we're stocking RISC-5 products. This one happens to have the Kendrite k 20. K210. K210, sorry. Yes. And uh, this is the M5 stick. So this is Jelly. She runs new products, and you can see K210 
you recognize faces. All sorts of so that's cool the default things you can do with this. Kendrick demo. So it's got this Risk Five processor with um, hardware acceleration, and you can see how fast it is. It's quite fast doing inference on images, which is nice because um, it's it's you know if you're doing AI, uh, you want either a hardware coprocessor or hardware support. So let's look at the overhead. Yeah. Because I will show you. Oh, this is. This is the demo, and you can see it recognizes faces, and has this neat thing where it keeps the screen uh, in view of the person. But yes, you uh, can see it. This. I will say one of the things is, is that she had it very close to her face, which is why when she turned it, it didn't recognize her. So you do have to be more than three feet from the person for the best, so you can actually get the field of view. Um, so it's got this OV sensor. It looks like it's got a microphone as well. RGBW uh, LED probably uses that for uh, lighting, so you can get like even lighting. Um, and then I think it's probably got a accelerometer motion sensor of some sort. SD card, uh, 200 milliamp hour LiPo battery. I'll say the LiPo doesn't last very long because it's a very high current chip. Um, it's got a Grove connector, which also will work with our stemma boards, uh, USB C. And then there's this kind of a sandwich board which has a um, micro SD card slot, and then underneath you can kind of barely see it. There's some memory and the Kendroid chip itself. So the Kendroid chip kind of does everything. Um, you program it over the USB to serial converter. It doesn't have native USB. Um, it's got also a little speaker. So this is quite a packed board. I'm, I'm really liking the M5 stick, how much they fit in to um, their designs. And then um, you can see it's got this color. I think it's like 200 by 150. Uh, IPS TFT display. It's got a couple buttons that you can press. And then, of course, um, the camera, speaker, and microphone. So, um, a really cute little all in one um, hardware development board for if you want to do AI. Um, you'll check out the Kendrite documentation for what other guides that they have going on. So, there's a couple different. Um, demonstrations that you can do with this hardware, but I'll say uh, the one downside is that it's battery powered. You can't run off the battery very long, not at least with the camera and uh, display going. All right. Next up, the star of the show tonight, besides community and all of our customers and our, our team. It's a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit Alpha. Yes, so it is here. Alpha means that I reserve the right to change hardware, um, but it won't change significantly. Um, but it is just a warning to people. So this doesn't have make code support yet. Uh, CircuitPython support is coming very soon. We're going to do a release with that. Um, Arduino is supported, um, at, you know, as it is sort of like all of our other NRF52840 guides. Um, so we have a feather, so it's very similar to that. But we don't have like the all-in-one easy to use library yet. So this is very alpha. It's, it's out there, it's for people who are totally cool with Hey, you know, every week you might have to download a board support library. It's not drag and drop. It's cutting edge. It. It's cutting edge. It's going to give people a warning. Um, that said, it does totally work. Uh, we did some range tests. We got 75 feet ah. of Bluetooth range. We're going to play that video. Okay, we'll play that video. So let's uh, show you. So we're shipping this. We're calling it alpha, like Lady Ada said, because we might change the hardware design eventually. But this is for people that want to use this as a development board to test it. You also can follow along our story of what we're doing with this. So we're going to play two videos. First is how far can it go, and then the tester that we made for it. So we'll do these back to back. How far can it go? Yeah. About a city block away, but we're inside <laughs> of Adafruit. Yes. So um, you're going to control this. See down there? Way down here. I'm going to use this super zoom. Can you zoom? Can you zoom mm -hmm. in? Yeah, I can't zoom. Hey, Ashley. OK, Ashley. Ashley's over there. Hi. Um, but We're so to, to the left of her is a circuit yeah. playground blue okay. fruit. Yeah, do it. Change okay. it. Okay, changing it's, it to it's red. Spec. I'm changing it to blue. Yep. I'm that changing works. it to green. Now white. Now yellow. Now light blue. Okay. Now purple. So it's working. Yep. Distance testing. Okay. Hello, I'm working on the circuit playground blue fruit tester coming soon into the store. Uh, we got some new panels of PCBs and now I'm testing them using my classic TNT tester. Let's do it! So this circuit playground is actually a transmitter that it uses to test the radio, so this is a part of the test. So you're testing it with itself. I know, it's, well, another one of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's then cool. it says press this button to test the red LEDs, and then you press this button to test the blue LEDs. 
and then makes a bleep, and then it programs in the final test. All right. And so there that's you go. Circuit Playground Blue Fruit Express. Yes. Being tested. By itself. By itself. Cool. Good work. Yeah. So there you go. Okay, but back to it. All right, so let's go to the overhead and I can show what you get with this board. So we have this as a coming soon, and uh, we talked about it then, we'll talk about it again. So you get the NR52840 chip in the center here, that's a one megabyte flash, 256K RAM, Cortex M4 running at 64 megahertz. It's got two megabytes of QSPY flash over here, so you can use that for storing files, configuration data, circuit Python code, etc. cetera. Um, it's got micro USB, and the reason I went or stuck with micro USB is, um, so it'll fit the case that we made for the Circuit Playground Express. So it's the same exact configuration for the switches and the buttons. Um, so that makes it so you can reuse this case, which we so lovingly designed with Mike Dole um, like a year, year and a half ago. Um, it still has 10 RGB NeoPixel LEDs, just like the Circuit Playground Express. It's got the two buttons. It's got the temperature sensor, the light sensor, triple axis accelerometer. PDM microphone uh, speaker. Um, one thing about the speaker that has changed is that this chip does not have a true DAC. Uh, the NR52840 doesn't have an analog output like the SAMD21. So you can play audio clips out of it, but they're not gonna sound as good as the 21, which had like this nice 10-bit audio output. Um, we do PWM output, and you can do like some basic beeps and sound effects, but it's just not gonna sound as good as the SAMD21. Um, we have the reset button, and then we don't have IR because instead we have Bluetooth. So we made room instead for the Bluetooth antenna, which is where the IR stuff um, used to be over here. And um, the uh, nice thing about this is that you can still you know, do device to device, but you don't use IR, you use Bluetooth because we have central mode working. Um, so this is that antenna um, coming down here and we tried to kind of make it as far away as possible from all the metal bits. Um, it has capacitive touch on all the pads and it has analog on uh, six of the pads. So A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and A6 have analog inputs. But there's just not as many analog inputs on this board as the SAMD21, so TX and audio are not analog inputs. So you still get plenty, but not as many. One nice thing about the SAMD52840 uh, is that it can do um, peripheral pin muxing on like almost any pin. So any pin can be a PWM output because there's no, like only these pins can do PWM, like any pin can do anything. So even though we mark these as I squared C and UART, any pin can be anything, which kind of makes it neat for um, making hardware that you can you know, attach on and you don't have to worry about like, oh, does this have a timer on it or something? Um, you have the switch and the battery. Um, you can charge it, sorry, you can power it over LiPo or AAA batteries, just like the Circuit Playground Express. Like the Circuit Playground Express, it doesn't do battery charging. We did that on purpose because um, younger kids shouldn't be using LiPoly batteries. They're not uh, safe for young users because they could uh, crush them or damage them or accidentally put them in the wash. We wanted to make sure that we could run this off of AAA batteries, like our little battery pack. And so in order to do that and not damage the alkalines, we did not put it battery charging circuit on here. So that's on purpose so that people can safely use it with any kind of battery without accidentally trying to charge that battery and causing a um, little fire or, or battery meltdown. Um, it's got a fuse on it and the regulator and yeah, you can program it right now with CircuitPython or Arduino and hopefully we'll have make code coming shortly. So that's the Adafruit Blue Fruit Circuit Playground. Alpha Edition. And with that is new products. Okay. New product recap. Ready, new, 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 new. Okay. We've got the updated Feather M0 LoRa now has an FCC certified RFM 9X module. That's the only difference. Just has a tin on it. FCC certified. We've got a selection of like 20 plus vinyl high quality color stickers these were totally okay from cartoon network they were excited to see us making accessories for circuit playground expresses um you get a selection of stickers sign up and we'll put these in the store shortly but we want to announce them for the end of the summer this uh, enclosure works with 
any feather other than the feather phono or any other long feathers um, and can use a battery and switch as well for portable usage if you have a wireless feather and a Neotrellis 4x4 to make a portable MIDI controller or button board. The uh, Adafruit Semi-QT Breakout for MSA301, it's a low-cost triple axis accelerometer, but it does quite a lot. You have uh, you know, motion tap detections and stuff, as well as, of course, your standard accelerometer behavior, which is moving around. Coming soon from Kathy is the BOTS Robotic Engineering book. Uh, it uses a bunch of Adafruit stuff, but it's also beautifully written. She's done guides for us. We highly recommend signing up to check out this book when it's out. Also coming soon, just released yesterday, is the new Infineon Optiga Trust M crypto authentication chip, which adds AES, RSA, HMAC, you know, secure storage of certificates, uh, as well as uh, random number generators and such. So more crypto auth chips coming into the market is good for security. The uh, M5 stick is a RISC-V chipset from uh, Kendrite, the Kendrite K210. And it has AI hardware acceleration, so you can do uh, face recognition. It also has microphone, uh, this lovely little TFT display, SD card, speaker, probably some sensors as well. You can plug stuff into it. Uh, it's a great little uh, dev kit for if you want to play with the Kendrite. It's a super low cost way to do that, as well as hardware accelerated uh, RISC-V AI. And the star of the show is this week is the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. It's like the Circuit Playground Express, but with wireless. Now with the NRF52 840 chip, uh, it can do um, wireless Bluetooth central and peripheral control, but it still has all those sensors that you love from Circuit Playground. Uh, currently with Arduino and Circuit Python support, MIT code may be coming soon. Uh, this is alpha hardware, so uh, it may change, but uh, if you are interested in developing or playing with this new board, uh, pick one up because uh, we'll, we promise it will always work. It just might be not exactly what we release at the end.